On the streets of San Francisco, a crisis up close of homelessness, mental health, and open air drug dealing. We are doing everything we can. We are making the arrest. A fentanyl crisis across the state of California. It is powerful, it is cheap, and it's deadly. So I've covered the opioid and drug crisis here for a long time. And I've always been curious about, um, you know, the, the supply side. At the San Francisco Chronicle, photographer Gabrielle Lurie and reporter Megan Cassidy set out to answer a complex question. Beyond just the users, but who are the dealers? At a time where drugs are claiming a record number of lives, who is selling them and where are they coming from? I texted all the dealers I knew and I'd ever met and I said, where are you from? And they all came back with the same answer. That's when we started saying like, oh, there's that village, there's that village, there's that village. What have we stumbled upon here? Like it was just, just kind of, just left us speechless. So we have been on a dirt road now for about an hour. We're not getting service here, so we have to ask people around uh, for the people that we're looking for. Their research and connections took them to a cluster of villages in Honduras called the Syria Valley. Do you think that like all of this was farmland at one point? Well, there's there's some that looks like it sure. still has some farmland. Even though it's thousands of miles from San Francisco, there were lots of reminders of home. Giant bumper sticker or like a warrior's flag or somebody wearing it, wearing a warrior's t-shirt. We, we started seeing the insignia all over, um, especially on the houses. There was a, is it Giants logo on the, on the gate? And I remember Gabrielle just saying, like, what have we stumbled upon here? More than 100 interviews revealed a clear connection between these small villages in Honduras and the Bay Area. It kind of snowballed. One person came here who we, who we talked about. Is the, he's called the OG. Um, he came here in the, in the 90s and more and more people started coming here. Their investigation included an extensive review of thousands of court cases. There's definitely people in that town that work legally um, and send money home. But what was astounding to us was these massive mansions that are being built specifically from drug money here. Most Hondurans reaching the U.S. find legal work, but in San Francisco, more than 200 Honduran migrants have been charged with drug dealing since 2022. Part of it, I think, has to do with uh, the sanctuary city policies here. There's a million other reasons as well. Um, and so I think that that's what makes this story so complex. There are a lot of people who would like to do legal work, but that means finding an immigration attorney to help you get paperwork. That means, you know, getting a, a social security number or, you know, going, you know, figuring out an internship. Um, all these things take time. Cassidy and Lurie are hoping that their story adds awareness and perspective about one of California's most urgent issues. This is a much, much bigger issue than the, just the streets, just our city. It's bigger than our state. It's an international, global issue. Such a challenge and it's so complex and endlessly tragic and endlessly fascinating. Deirdre Fitzpatrick, KCRA 3 News. Incredible journalism there. They took two trips to Honduras for this story, one for eight days, another for five days. For this investigation, they interviewed 25 Honduran migrants who sell drugs or used to sell drugs. That includes one mother who spoke to them from prison. She talked about her role in a family-run fentanyl dealing business. Their five-part investigation is available right now to read by scanning this QR code. But as they pointed out, endlessly fascinating, but also very troubling. A massive destruction caused by that drug. Huge. Yeah, and, and we've seen it in that city, certainly. Yeah.